Hi, everybody. It's Susan again, and I'm back to talk to you about the Mars and Saturn conjunction, which is happening today on the 10th of April. That's Wednesday, the 10th of April. And it's pretty much the same day for everyone, except if you are in the East, um, Far East or South Asia, for example, then it would be the 11th of April. Uh, nonetheless, it's active all week, pretty much. It's already been active for the last three or so days. And we have seen a, quite a number of events that really describe this. And I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, and then, of course, it, it does continue to be active right through to the weekend. So and it's something that you can keep an eye out for because it's a, another seeding moment, just like we had at the eclipse. And so we, we want to think about this as the beginning of a two-year cycle. It's not just an event that uh, lasts for a day or a couple of days. It's uh, quite a major event because it is every two years. It's, it's not an absolutely rare event, but it's always significant. Uh, the two malefics of the zodiac coming together, um, and those uh, always set off a cycle of conflict and some kind of conflict res resolution. And that can be in, uh, in global events and also potentially in our life as well. Now, conflicts can be large or, or small. So, for example, it will be something that is a challenge. It doesn't have to be necessarily violent or uh, deeply conflictual, but it's something that you need to grapple with. And so for all of us, there's something that we need to pay attention to in the area where you find Pisces in your chart. And so that can be something that you're motivated by. It's not necessarily something that you feel is overwhelming. Um, and especially for those who are directly affected by this, for example, if you are a Pisces, uh, sun, moon or rising, but especially um, I think if you're looking at the sun and rising sign particularly, um, and if you are an Aries and or uh, if you are, for example, a Scorpio, you have Mars as your ruler. So Mars is very important for you and it works really well for you. So that's not problematic at all. If you are Capricorn, this works really well for you because not only is Mars exalted in Capricorn, but Saturn is your ruler. And then for Aquarius, Saturn rules you too. And so this can actually work in your favor. Now, the one thing for Aries signs, um, whether it's sun, moon or uh, rising sign, is that this is happening in the 12th house. And so the ideas that you might have or the ambitions that you might have might take a little while to get off the ground. And you might not find that you have the consistency of energy or motivation to do the thing that you want to do. Uh, so don't worry, your time is coming because in two years on the 21st of April, uh, of 2026, we're having the next Saturn-Mars uh, conjunction. So when, when these uh, signs conjoin, they keep changing signs, they keep progressing through the natal chart. And that's going to be in Aries in two years' time. That time it's going to be conjoined by Mercury as well. And it's exactly where we find Venus today. So if you look at the, the current chart um, for this moment, we've got Venus at seven degrees of Aries. And next, the next cycle in two years time, the ending of this cycle will involve Mercury and uh, Mars and, the, and Saturn on this point. So notice what's going on around this time, because this is another micro moment of seeding, if you think um, in terms of how the charts relate. And I'm going to show you a number of different ways of looking at how to keep picking up on the themes of the, the cycles as they rotate through uh, the zodiac. Right, so at the time that we have this uh, conjunction, we also have the ruler of the conjunction, Jupiter, conjoining the moon and Uranus. So it's already very strongly in a conjunction. It's, um, it's now less than two degrees away from Uranus. And it's important because Jupiter rules Saturn as long as it's in Pisces. And of course, now that Mars is in Pisces, it's also ruling Mars. And so whatever this is, it's affecting uh, the moon in a global sense rep represents our the, the general public, the people, um, our opinions, if you like. And it's something very different because we're looking at this in, uh, in a, a context of what we're moving towards as Saturn leaves, uh, for, pardon me, as Mars leaves Saturn and moves quickly on, because it's only a, a couple of days, it's going to very quickly sextile Jupiter. And, uh, and then uh, shortly after that, it's going to sextile Uranus. 
Now, so these are things to keep in mind. This is a rolling, obviously, things that are happening over uh, a course of days and weeks, and then it, it's setting a pattern for two years. Um, so when we look at this from a personal level, as I mentioned, you want to find this in your chart where Pisces is. And to do that, uh, have a look at uh, my, from maybe two years ago, I think it was something like the end of 2022, I did a video on Saturn going through Pisces for the next, for those two and a half or three years. And, uh, and it's quite thorough. So it's done sign by sign, and you'll find out what you need to pay attention to. So I'm just going to give you the details in terms of the energy of Mars and Saturn. But if you want to know this more personally, look at the Saturn in Pisces video, if you haven't seen that already. And if you have uh, Saturn in Pisces, I still have as an ongoing offer, as long as Saturn is in Pisces, a 10% discount for anyone who is born with Saturn in Pisces. And um, that would be you if you were born around sort of 94, 95, and uh, also 65, 66, and so on. Um, and so you can uh, get 10% off uh, a transit reading if you're interested. And I can help you understand better how this is going. And there's a code for that, and it is Fearless Fish. You'll find that in the description box below, along with the link to the Saturn in Pisces video. Um, and yes, I do uh, consults, uh, consultations. I am. That's what I do mostly. That's why you don't see me very often on YouTube. Uh, my job is mostly the consultations. I prefer doing that to doing these videos. Um, but uh, if you want to have a consultation, check my link below and you can, uh, you can book a session. I'm going to have to slow down my readings in the summer because I'm writing a book. And so I won't probably do many readings, if any at all, in July and August. So just as a heads up, if you think you'd like a reading, you should uh, probably book soon because I'm still at this point, I'm taking readings uh, for late May and June. Uh, right, so uh, that's my little sh spiel, my little publicity. Uh, so if you if you're natally uh, born with this, as I mentioned, you you would have had um, this in ninety four, this particular conjunction, and also in sixty six. I happen to be one of those <laughs> babies, uh, so it happened exactly in uh, I think it was February twenty first of. Um, 1966 when uh, Saturn and uh, Mars met up in Pisces and then again it happened in 1994 um, and these are really big turning points uh, I'll just briefly touch on those in a in a moment when we look at uh, more specifics how the cycles work but um, this is something to keep in mind because if you do have this natally it will always have a really significant impact on your life as you go forward in these the almost 30 year cycles, roughly 30 year cycles. Uh, and so your life will be really um, transformed in, a, in quite a big way around these um, conjunctions in your sign. And also it affects um, not only the Pisceans, but also by opposition, it affects all Virgos. So you can even imagine in the same um, time frame, it affects Virgos and then by, uh, by opposition and then uh, by square, it would affect Gemini and Sagittarius. And those are really big moments of shift. So all the mutable signs are being um, really uh, challenged to change. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Mutable signs are quite happy to change. It's often uh, something that uh, they thrive on depending on your chart, but um, but the energy of the mutable signs is about being flexible and adaptable. So it's not as difficult. Um, and also all of the water signs. So that means obviously Pisces, but then Cancer and uh, Scorpio as well are having this by trine. And so the trine gives you great motivation. It gives you a real sense of, um, I want to do this. I want this change to happen. And I want this to be something that is constructive and productive going forward to a lesser degree then all of the um, other signs will be affected as well by in a nice way by sextile you'll have for example Taurus and uh, Capricorn um, affected but as I mentioned earlier Capricorn is eating this up they they uh, work really well with Mars and Saturn energy so this will have you thriving one way or another um, Right. So uh, keep in mind that um, although it's challenging and especially so, on a global scale, it is always socially challenging. We can't get away from that. 
Um, it is also a, a real motivator for change, for social change. So it can sometimes come through eruptions like um, revolutions or wars or uh, other kinds of um, patterns that manifest. Um, assassinations is uh, one of them that manifests. Um, we've seen a number of important assassinations around the time uh, in these in these cycles, related to these cycles. And, um, you know, the last time in 1994, for example, it's relating to the cycle um, of the previous one, which where the Oslo Accords, for example, were signed in September 93 to try and establish a peace process between the Palestinians and the Israelis. And it, it, it undid itself at the beginning of the 1994 cycle. And then um, Yitzhak uh, Rabin was uh, assassinated uh, the year after by um, Netanyahu's uh, follower uh, because they didn't want this peace process. So uh, you see how these things go. And then if we go back to the 60s, and uh, we also have had assassinations, for example, especially so in 1968, um, often within a couple of weeks or at least a couple of months of this transit. So uh, that was when, for example, Martin Luther King was assassinated within an, a week of the 1968 conjunction. And, um, and it was also within, and that was in Aries. And uh, it was also just a couple of mo uh, months after that in June of 1968 that Robert uh, Kennedy was assassinated, Bobby Kennedy. Um, so these are um, trying times, and especially when Mars is very strong. Mars is not so strong in this particular one, and therefore there may even be some uh, potential for progress and peace. Um, at least a sense of moving in the direction that people are hoping to achieve some kind of reconciliation or a, a fresh new start. Now, um, it's not necessarily aligning with the world that we live in, but we can certainly do that on our uh, individual levels and, uh, and work towards that. Um, if you look at this from an individual perspective, what seems like a big, bad, scary um, conjunction is actually a fantastic motivator. So you find that a lot of uh, people who are really successful have this. And it, it also depends the degree of conjunction. So obviously, the closer the degree of conjunction, the more impactful it is. And so there can be um, even a certain degree of cruelty or anger or frustration or resentment in the person who has it in a very, very tight conjunction. If Mars is approaching Saturn, so if the conjunction is happening as, uh, as it's building, um, Mars meaning would be in a, in a lower degree than Saturn, um, then you're in this, uh, it, it can be a period of trepidation where you feel like you're moving into a, almost like a, an obstacle or working towards something that feels really, really hard to attain. And that energy can be like a, a life pattern where there just feels like there's this constant sense of uh, having to overcome really major hurdles that, that can be a natal pattern. Um, and then when there's a separating conjunction, meaning Mars is moved because Mars moves faster than Saturn, then it's moving on um, and then takes on higher degrees up to, say, six or seven degrees. So I have it, for example, at six degrees, um, Mars uh, six degrees ahead of my Saturn. Um, then there's this uh, feeling of the worst is behind you. <laughs> and there's a feeling that you're, you now have an assignment. Saturn is like a teacher. It gives an assignment. Like this is the thing you want to take action on. So if you think of this week as what's my assignment, you're waiting to take orders from Saturn. You're waiting to hear what it is, or you're recognizing already what it is that you're ready to go for. And then you're going to run with it. And as you run with it, then Mars is uh, picking up steam, moving away from Saturn, feeling less and less uh, restriction um, and picking up um, uh, dignity as well, because then eventually Mars will move into Aries where it's very strong. And so whatever it is you're setting out to accomplish by the end of April, you'll start to feel that you can really get a lot done as Mars goes through uh, pardon me, yes, uh, by the end of April. And so Mars will go through Aries through the month of May and into June. So you've got a lot of momentum that you're going to be picking up. Um, so you can think of it in that way. If you feel frustrated, if you think things are moving very slowly, um, this gives you a great boost in terms of ambition and drive and endurance and forbearance and all of those qualities that people will have natally as well. 
um, this is an opportunity for you to really find your inner courage to do the right thing. Uh, Saturn is, um, is very much linked to karma. Obviously, the entire natal chart is linked to karma. It's about how what has gone before has brought us to this moment. And uh, it's karma, just as a brief reminder, PSA, uh, karma is not about punishment and reward so much as simple consequences of things that have happened and things that we are doing are going to create new karma. And, uh, and so we're dealing with our actions in this moment as a way of becoming aware of what we want to create in the future, because that's going to have an effect in our lives as well as the lives of others uh, based on what we do, what action we take. So karma comes from the root word kar, which is simply the hand. It's, uh, it's the actions that you uh, take with your hand. Ma is uh, an, a short form or a, a, a part of the word for manas, which means the mind. So it's the action that the mind uh, guides the hands with. And so, um, so don't think of this as any kind of punishment or something that you are uh, being restricted by, but rather, what is it that I need to do in this moment that is the right thing to do? The right thing for me, the right thing socially, the right thing by the life that I want to lead. Um, and so if you apply this energy, if even if you're feeling frustrated or if you're feeling a little bit um, too intense at this moment and you apply this energy to a project or to some kind of manifestation, especially in Pisces, of uh, something that brings benefit to all, um, you, I think you'll find that you really start to feel this incredible sense of well-being and uh, achievement. There's a higher purpose to Mars and Saturn in Pisces. It's not taking action um, for, for mundane reasons, usually. Not usually very motivated. Mars in Pisces is not motivated by money and um, and fame and that kind of thing. It's a spiritual warrior kind of energy. And combined with Saturn, it's grounded in something. It's a determination to accomplish something for other for other people. Um, it can also go the other way, where if there's a feeling, it depends on everybody's natal chart, of course, uh, but there can be a feeling of what's the point? Why? Why? Why bother? Um, again, it depends on whether Saturn is uh, in uh, is being approached by Mars or being left by Mars, depending on whether it's a applying or a separating conjunction. Um, because there can be also this feeling of doubt. I doubt my capacity. I doubt that I can do this, especially as Mars is approaching Saturn. I doubt myself. Um, this can be a, a, a wobbly energy where your self-confidence or your conviction might waver as well. Uh, so again, that will depend on the quality of uh, other factors of your chart. But uh, in, in a general sense, that can be what this is. And so we want to keep that sense of what can I do for other people? Uh, because whenever we waver, if we doubt what we're doing, we doubt our capacities, we can remind ourselves that we're, we're just doing this one thing for the betterment of somebody, for the greater good of this situation, of this moment in time, of this community or this world. And, um, and it doesn't have to be big actions. Like you could literally get to the point where if you really have no sense of what it is you want to do, you can simply say to yourself, well, I can go out and clean the street for my neighborhood. I'll just pick up rubbish wherever I see it. Uh, I'll just do something good. I'll feed the birds. I'll go out and um, just simply tidy up the bushes out in front of the garden or something like that. Simple, simple things. If you're really feeling that you have no other ambitions in this moment and those small things and ideally done anonymously um, Saturn and um, Saturn and Mars and Pisces are not looking for fame uh, that is really a, a quality of um, doing something for the good of uh, the outcome you're doing something without worrying about whether somebody notices you and you're not filming it and putting it on Instagram so real charity doesn't require any any other um, uh, acknowledgement. It's, it's ideally anonymous. Charity is best done anonymously. Um, that's when it's true charity. Otherwise, it's just looking for <laughs> attention. There's another motive there that needs to be explored. Um, and so if you're really not sure what to do, just do something small. Feed the birds. Uh, take care of your neighborhood. Um, do a kind gesture for your neighbor. Um, tell them you're going to the grocery store and you can buy them groceries or something like that. 
Uh, these are small gestures and they are best done with care for people outside of you, outside of yourself, outside of your own small interests um, and your own needs. And in doing that in this generous way, you get things coming back to you. You're not doing it to get that. That's the quid pro quo we're not doing, but it's um, you will get something coming back to you because that's the nature of karma when it's done just for the sake of doing the right thing. Um, you get a better result. And that's how that goes. And if you, for example, you see something is wrong, uh, something is morally wrong, or something needs fixing, fixing, or something is, uh, is unacceptable in your society, in your neighborhood, in your situation, um, you stand up and say so. And um, whenever somebody stands up and says, this is not okay, it also allows other people to feel that courage to do the same thing. And you start to build a movement and you start to build an opportunity to make change. And if we wait for a savior, now this would be the other side of Pisces, where there might be a victim consciousness that's so strong that says, I, I can't do it, I'm not good enough, what's the point? Um, if you wait, then of course, uh, the moment is lost. And so is the momentum. And nobody's going to be there to save you either. <laughs> so, uh, so you want to get rid of that childish way of looking at things, waiting for a savior, waiting for Santa Claus, waiting for mommy and daddy uh, to come and fix things, whether it be in the form of a government or a boss or whatever else, and take action, the thing that you need to do. This is the Saturn and uh, Mars energy. Um, very strongly. Um, so if you if you do hang around and wait and don't do anything for yourself and you're not taking action based on something that you know you need to do, then the consequences are going to show up. You will find, especially with Saturn, um, that you you really need to do the hard work. There's no avoiding that. And um, the more that you avoid these things, the more your situation will worsen. Um, so you, you can't blame astrology for that. You can, if you're sitting on the couch and you don't take action, it's not the fault of Mars and Saturn. So we want to be, again, a bit mature about how we use this. It's a pattern of symbolism. It's a symbol um, that shows us that hard work and effort are required, and it's you're going to get a better result. So, um, so think about that as much as you can in the, in the week ahead. Um, and all of this period, because this is, uh, of course, a really prime time as Mars is ruling the eclipse, and the eclipse was only two days before this conjunction. So we are still in this energy, very, very powerfully so, for a couple of weeks. And part of this energy is the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, which I'll be speaking about um, early next week. And I will also do a YouTube live, by the way, um, on the day of that conjunction on the 20th of April, and um, and that I will also do some readings on that day as well, and uh, I'll put up a notification for that as well. So some of you were saying you had missed the last live uh, uh, video, but um, please click the subscribe button and no get the notifications by clicking that little bell, and that allows you to see when I post something. Now, if you've got thousands of subscriptions and you're you've got loads of channels that you follow, um, it'll just get lost in the noise. So you may have to go looking for it if you really want to um, show up. Um, right. So in the Saturn, um, Mars and Saturn in Pisces, uh, when they're close together, they will not allow this victim energy to linger. You can't wallow in your self-pity for very long because uh, there's an energy of you've got to do something. And it comes also through a certain amount of a feeling of obligation. The Saturn uh, Mars Saturn always has this feeling of a duty obligation it's a an energy that you find often in people who are like first responders or police uh, officers or uh, military people especially high-ranking officials people who take responsibility where the 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 buck stops there for example um, and so basically, if you have this sense of, I know I need to do this, but I don't know how, I don't know when, if you need to do something, just do it today. Just start one little thing and do it today. And each day, as you take that next step and the next step and the next step, it leads you towards the thing that you need to do. And you can simply build your resilience and you build your commitment and you build your responsibility to yourself um, in, in each little step that you're taking. 
Um, that would be another word for this Mars and Saturn is integrity. Um, when you when you are acting with integrity, you get uh, more respect from people. You've earned that respect. And that's another quality that you find with people who have Mars, Saturn um, come close together in their chart. And at, let's say within seven degrees, six or seven degrees of a, of a conjunction, particularly uh, strongly, um, those people will always um, have, a, a, depending again on other factors of the chart, but generally speaking, those people will do what they say they're going to do. And they will follow through. They will have this sense of, yeah, okay, I'll finish that. I will do that. Um, because there's a, a sense internally that they would feel they've let themselves down or they would feel guilty. They would feel racked <laughs> with guilt uh, for not doing it. It just feels like, why wouldn't you do the right thing? Um, so one of the things, and maybe I'll call the video this, um, you, that expression is just feel the fear and do it anyway. That's Mars and Saturn. So you just get on with it. It's like, find the courage. You, you, people are not born courageous. Courage comes through the necessity of the moment. And that will, uh, anyone who has done extraordinary things will say, look, I'm not, I don't see myself as an extraordinary person. It's just that I needed to get that done. I needed to do this thing. I was the one person there in that situation and I did the thing so this is very much what we're dealing with with this kind of energy in your own life um, this is a very good measure of the quality of your engagement to yourself your your appreciation for yourself and especially in Pisces we want to see that as a sense of um, what is my the quality of my overall experience of life and my relationship to my more spiritual way of living, my more spiritual aspect of life itself, less of the material stuff and more of the material, uh, the uh, spiritual stuff, and, and feeling that I'm here for a greater purpose. So how can I um, be practical, practical about that? How can I put uh, my greater purpose or my sense of higher aspiration into action and you'll hear more about that if you watch that Saturn in Pisces video um, that's linked below uh, so I wanted to go over a few of these um, uh, these cycles because this is actually the ending of a cycle that began two years ago and I'm going to pull that one up uh, so the previous cycle was the Mars-Saturn conjunction of 2022. I'm just going to flip these two around. Um, so the inner circle is the Mars and Saturn conjunction of 2022. Let's just maybe quickly take a look at that one. Um, here we had that in a broad conjunction with Venus at the same time. And it was just about, um, I think it was the 23rd of March, where we had... Um, Mars conjoining Pluto and um, that was also quite impactful at that time as well uh, so it was just before it was uh, yeah uh, let's say two weeks before uh, or maybe three weeks before so it was well into it was in March Mars was conjoining Pluto and then if we go back another couple of years I'll show you the chart for the 2022 uh, conjunction which it was in Capricorn at 22 degrees and that one was just following the Mars-Jupiter-Pluto um, conjunction. So um, exciting times. Uh, let's have a look uh, at this one. So this, this particular one, uh, also, if you notice, I'm going to show you resonances with the different placements as we go. So this um, from two years back now, the Mars-Saturn conjunction from 2022, 5th of April, 2022, had a sun at 15 degrees of Aries, and we'll find that is exactly where the North Node is today on this uh, new cycle that is beginning. And so we're always picking up something of a clue of what is being carried over of the, this cycle into the next cycle. So clearly we have still this very strong Mars uh, and Aries quality that's really strong, even though Mars is in um, the Saturn ruled sign of Aquarius at the time. Uh, we also have Jupiter and Neptune in Pisces. And so they still are, they're playing a role, but now from a new place because Jupiter has gone into a sextile to where it is in this one. 
And, um, and that is where we find the north node of this previous eclipse. It's easier to find if we can look at the chart together. So these charts together are showing us these combinations that are repeating patterns. Now we've got uh, Jupiter is moving into the sextile, but it's, it's already in orb of sextile. And it's conjoining the moon and Uranus today on the day that we have the Piscean uh, Mars and Saturn conjoining. And, um, and then we also have, as I mentioned, the North Node conjoining the Sun, and actually it's in a, it's in a conjunction also with Chiron. So um, on the other end of that, we still have the Node effectively conjunct Chiron, except that this time there's a strong conjunction with um, the Mercury of that previous cycle as well. So we're looking at a number of repeating patterns. Remember that the next cycle is going to be conjoining the Venus of today, and on and on and on it goes. And so we see that there's a repeat, a repeat, a repeat. And each time we're building on these themes. And so look at what's going on around this time with regards to Venus issues, relationship issues, money issues, um, issues around value, self-worth, issues obviously around the military, issues around healing, healing around identity, um, healing around violence, healing around aggression, etc. Uh, so all of these things are, are being called in again and again. So Pluto itself is in a square to the midheaven of the previous um, of the previous uh, conjunction. And so there again, we're looking at a big shift, a big transformation um, in terms of the energy that we're bringing forward because now at this point, Pluto is in um, is in Aquarius for the first time where the last time it was in Capricorn. Um, so, so this is just a, a way of understanding how things are shifting and they keep bringing the cycles through again and again. Now, in that 2022 um, cycle, um, about four or five days afterwards, on the 9th of April, we had Boris Johnson going to Istanbul, where on the 31st of March, there were peace talks underway, really successfully underway, uh, with a number of international leaders, and this was all taking place in Istanbul. They had begun in Belarus, and then they moved the talks to Istanbul. And uh, they had uh, paraffed, or this is a word for uh, signed or given their signature, to a draft agreement. They were very close to an agreement on a peace deal with Russia. And uh, Boris Johnson uh, flew out at the behest of Washington and basically told Volodymyr Zelensky not to agree to the peace deal. He promised that NATO would support Ukraine and that they should keep fighting. And everybody who had any notion of the last 30 years of history, um, I am no expert, but I did work on the Russia desk for the Euro European uh, Union. And I'll show you that in a moment when we come to the 1994 uh, uh, um, conjunction. I was working with NATO in the early years of the uh, 1990s, where uh, where we were trying to integrate East and West. Uh, we were talking about a peace dividend in those days. Imagine, can you imagine peace dividend? Wow. And now we see the consequence of that 30 years later, which is that um, they were lying. And uh, there has been just such an enormous amount of uh, bad will from the part of the West, and I say that advisedly, uh, that it's very, very difficult to blame one or another side exclusively for the situation that we're in here. And so we, we saw Boris Johnson going to stop a peace process that was really underway and today, if we look then at the result of that, we have a result which shows, if I pull up now the chart for, um, I'll pull up Ukraine, for example. And we can see that Ukraine is, so this was Ukraine at the last conjunction. So that was happening in their first house with Pluto in the 12th house and they not they natally have Saturn um, opposing Chiron, so not an easy gig anyway. Um, and this 
conjunction was opposing their uh, retrograde Mercury, Jupiter, and Venus, re retrograde uh, Mercury, direct Jupiter, and retrograde Venus. Um, and so there was quite a lot of uh, tension around doing deals because it's the first to the seventh house doing deals with other partners, how to, de how to deal with partners. And so we see that I, I won't be going into the natal chart here, but it's just uh, basically to point out that um, this was a mess. This was a complete mess that started off a cycle that was really um, unfortunate. We have the Jupiter, uh, uh, Jupiter and Neptune conjoining in the house of uh, speech and agreements. Uh, we have in the third house, the house of contracts and uh, borders. Third house represents borders, borders for a nation. This is, of course, the entire point of this peace treaty was about the borders. And uh, we have Chiron conjoining the sun, conjoining Mercury in Aries, uh, quite impulsive energy energy that does not really uh, bode well. And then we have the North Node with the Moon uh, conjoined in Taurus, um, all about land. And we have Uranus in an opposition to Pluto. Pluto is squaring this Mars and Saturn conjunction. Uh, so it's just to point out how these things shape up. So that's from the 2022 conjunction. And if we go then now to, to today's conjunction, we see that now we have Pluto, which it has been for the better part of a year, Pluto conjoining uh, Saturn. And uh, this will happen again in 2025. We'll get the same. Um, but that's that's one of the most difficult transits. Uh, Pluto-Saturn transits are um, challenging, to say the least. Uh, they require an enormous amount of effort to overcome and to be willing to change. This is in a fixed sign, so it's not necessarily very easy. If you have Aquarius, uh, this will also apply to you. So this may even resemble your chart for some of you. Um, but again, just to say that now we're dealing once again with this whole situation of agreements and contracts. Uh, it's now where we find the Mars and Saturn conjunction in the second house of uh, what we what what one's word represents and also values and money and. Um, how to deal with that. Now, this will be the focus for Ukraine in the next two-year cycle. Um, we have uh, a lot of energy still in the fourth house, and now we've got uh, Jupiter and the moon in the fourth house, and um, unfortunately, it is not going to be um, a very easy uh, ride because we're looking at uh, squares. We're looking at squares to... Um, uh, it's an opposition also, the Jupiter opposite Pluto, and we're looking at Jupiter, Moon, and Neptune, um, Uranus, uh, squaring the Mercury, Jupiter, and Venus. So this is um, not necessarily an easy way to negotiate. There's going to be a lot of tension and difficulty um, because Jupiter, although it's a benefic, it's not necessarily always going to give the best results, it's squaring the natal moon, uh, which is extremely important because that is the people of Ukraine. Um, and it does suggest that there's going to be a necessary change. We now have Uranus in a square to that moon. And, uh, and that's uh, requiring a, a big adjustment. It's, uh, it's not an easy thing at all. We will all through this year, we will have Chiron in a sextile to that moon as well. And this is also in a trine to the North Node um, um, of, uh, of uh, Ukraine. So I just wanted to point that out because this is also how we can see how these things have consequences going forward for the countries involved. First, it was about the status of Ukraine and their relationships. Now it's about um, their Money. It's about their um, that what they have, what the what values valuables that they have, uh, quickly diminishing. And now their biggest challenge is to go, is to be able to defend that what the what they have of value. Their biggest focus is going to be on trying to maintain land, and um, and then here we have issues around the border that are especially a focus of attention from the North Node. Right. Let's move away from Ukraine here. And um, I want to pull up now the, I'll just go back to one chart for now. I want to pull up now 
the i know we do want to hang on bear with me here there's a lot that is um overlapping so i'm just trying to remember all the things i wanted to show you we have now 2020 where are you there we go yeah so we have the 2020 chart as well and we see that um we had back two years ago we had four years ago now we had the 2020 conjunction at zero degrees of aquarius which is uh, conjoining currently where we have Pluto. So we're, this is, it shows that we're still dealing with these issues that were triggered at the very beginning of um, 2020 in a su succession of really major uh, transits. Remember I mentioned we had the um, Mars, Jupiter and uh, Pluto conjunction that was just um, like, I don't know, it was like 10 days before or not even 10 days before. I think it was maybe a week before. And um, perhaps it was on the 23rd of March. I think that was it. And, and that's quite significant because now we're dealing with something that is continuing that story of, um, of what was coming from the 2021. Remember, we also had the, well, let's just get really crazy here. I'm going to just keep throwing charts at you here so you can see how this all works. Here we'll put 20. Uh, we've got 2024 on the inside, 2022 on the um, middle ring and 2020 on the outer ring. So you see how all of these things keep lining up. They keep moving, the cycles keep moving in such a way as to affect the next cycle and keep triggering things that have not been resolved, that have to um, have to be looked at. Now, you can do the same thing with your own chart, by the way, if you especially if you have this conjunction, just keep using uh, your, your natal chart and go forward every two years and start to see how you'll notice how really significant things have happened in your life in those cycles of two years. Right. I'm not going to torture you with any more of these. I wanted to, however, go back. And here we're going to go back to um, 1994. So as I mentioned, I have this conjunction from 1996. Maybe what we'll do is we'll skip. I'm just going to, I won't go back through all of history because that's just a little bit too much. <laughs> so we'll go back um, just for my peeps from the 60s. So if you, um, this is, I uh, know that I don't want me, I want the actual chart of, hang on, I have to find it because I think I've, do, I've done so many that now I've lost it. There we go. So this is the chart that we want. We want the conjunction. So it almost looks like my chart because I was born like, um, I don't know, nine days later or something like that. Uh, so if you were born from, let's say the middle of February, until um, roughly the 3rd or 4th of March of 1966, you have this conjunction. This is a chart that will resemble your chart. Um, so for example, this is very much my chart, except that my moon has moved to, um, to, the, to the sign of cancer uh, with this chart. Uh, so you see that we have an awful lot of activity around this at this time. The moon was part of this story as well as Chiron. And in 1966, we had this really big shift around opinion um, it, with regards to social issues, um, moral issues around war, and especially with regards to the Vietnam War. Now, I want to point out that especially when this conjunction happens in um, when Mars Saturn conjoins in Aries, really big issues around war happen. So we're going to get that much more strongly so in uh, 2026. But I, I want to show you the 1968 um, version as well. Um, oh, and wait, what I wanted to also show before I do that, I'll carry on with my little theme. I want to bring it to today. So we're going to come back to where we were with today. So now we've got the 1966 conjunction. I'm going to put today in the middle so we see how 66 is affecting today and how this is, um, or let's do it the other way around. It's probably more logical so 66 is on the inside we have today on the outside so here we are once again and there's something that we're looking at in this cycle and it has a lot to do with the original cycle or not the original one but the one from 60 almost 60 years ago not quite 60 58 years ago 
Um, and that is uh, where we have, especially the conjunction with Mercury, we have the North node on and the South node on the axis of the ascendant descendant of that particular uh, one. And we have Jupiter at that particular point, which is actually where we're going to find Jupiter retrograding almost to the exact minute of the degree when it stations retrograde in, um, when is it in, all? I think it's the 2nd of October of 2024. So we're looking at these incredible overlays with 1966. So think about this because we're going back in time in a way that is going to show us something that recalls what has been going on in those eras, in those periods of time. There's always something that's going to be pulling in the energy of these uh, of these patterns in a really, really big way. Um, uh, what else do I want to point out here? Yeah, in that eclipse, it was very interesting. We had the sun in a square to the nodes at that time. Um, a really interesting pattern. And what I forgot to mention about the 2022 eclipse, uh, which I think is important enough for me to bring back, because I wanted to mention that as part of the story of the, uh, the peace agreements, is that that Saturn... And um, hang on, let's just take that out so we can just see it. So that Saturn and um, Mars-Saturn conjunction was exactly squaring the nodal axis uh, within less than a half of a degree. Uh, that's an incredibly tight square. And it does show that there's an enormous amount of conflict that is the focus of this chart. It is about uh, resolving the conflict. It's about resolving issues around uh, duplicity, secrecy, um, ulterior motives. I'm you, when you look at um, a chart in terms of mundane astrology, you want to go to the least nice version of what the interpretation is. We don't bring out the, the rainbows and unicorns when we're looking at mundane astrology. Um, and then also the issues around territory, money, um, belongings, uh, value, values as well, and all of those things. And so looking from the place of something that is about a collective ambition or a multinational ambition, which we have definitely seen here with regards to a um, uh, the recent uh, uh, two years of war. Um, I should also, let me bring out NATO's chart as well, because I think that's worth having a look at. Let's do it this way. I hope I have it. Uh, I don't have it. Let me see if I've got, because I lost a ton of charts and I haven't been able to reconstruct my, oh dear. It's, it'll take too long to reconstruct it. But anyway, NATO has a an Aries uh, stellium. As you can imagine, it's meant to be, a defensive organization, but with a stellium in Aries, we recognize that, of course, that was never true, that it is indeed an offensive um, organization, um, undercover, <laughs> you could call it. It's a pretend defensive uh, organization. Um, let me just check my notes because there were a number of things I wanted to point out here. Um, so let's go back then. I don't want to go back to 66, but I want to go back now to 1994. And we see if you were born around this time in 1994. So in this case, let's say a week before or after. So early March um, till the third week of March, you will have this as well. And so it's again, a really interesting uh, thing to look at what is coinciding with what we're dealing with now. So as I mentioned before, around this particular cycle, we had, um, I'm just using this as an example, because 1994 was a year where there were so many wars. There was genocide in Rwanda, there was um, war in Chechnya, there was a war in um, an ongoing war in uh, Sudan that's gone on for like 30 years, uh, it was still going on. Um, and then there were these intermittent breaks in wars, there were peace agreements here and there, and one of them was um, part of the, uh, the it broke the so-called peace agreement of September, the Oslo Accords that were agreed in uh, Washington, 
which I do have the chart for and which I will pull up because I think that's interesting because it's relevant to today. Um, where we have the Oslo Accords, uh, we also have a number of indicators in the chart that they were not going to really work out. Um, so I'm going to put Oslo Accords on the inside. Uh, so that's the 13th of September, 1993. I've given it noon because I don't know the time. I've tried to find the exact time and I don't have that. Um, so now we're looking at the Mars-Saturn conjunction of 1994, where the North Node of that conjunction is uh, conjoining the Ascendant and Pluto. And um, and it's, it's actually really um, significant because that is about the time that the Palestinians recognized that the accords were not going to be um, maintained and they started to attack uh, Israel. So there was, um, uh, they started to launch missiles into Israel and so on, creating a lot of havoc. Um, here we have the actual, uh, the, the next um, uh, conjunction here in the fifth house, we see in the fifth house, we see armies, we see um, people in service, um, in the sixth house, we see conflicts. Um, it's important in this particular case to recognize the rising sign for the Oslo Peace Accords is a Scorpio, um, Mars ruled Scorpio with the modern ruler Pluto exactly conjoining the ascendant. Um, it also is important to know that in the house of agreements and communication, we have Uranus and Neptune, uh, which may represent confusion or deception, outright deception, and it can be at the very best kind of optimistic, <laughs> optimistic thinking. It's in a square with Jupiter. Mars itself is in very poor dignity in this accord, so it was kind of doomed from the beginning. Um, it had never been taken seriously in 30 years. It's, um, it's a talking point that is used often to berate uh, Palestine uh, by saying that Hamas never wanted to negotiate. It's, an, it's, um, it's uh, not accurate to say that because by the time we have this Mars-Saturn conjunction and for the intervening 30 years, the, uh, the Israelis have continued to develop illegal um, settlements constantly. And this is one of the reasons that they were uh, attacked because the, the settlements never stopped. And so we see that the Chiron by the time uh, the, the, the Chiron is now in opposition on the Midheaven in opposition to this Mars and Saturn conjunction. Um, so I just wanted to bring up some of these things that are happening today and, uh, and then show you how they apply throughout years and years. So let's just see if I want, yeah, for 2024, there's one more thing I want to show you. Um, and that's more for the Americans here, but of course the U United States concerns us all uh in all the ways that that might mean <laughs> um and so let's have a look um right so we have the sibley chart i use the sibley chart because it's the one that gives consistently good um uh, sort of results when we when we look at what's going on um in major events let's say in the in the world here's the mars saturn uh, conjunction on of today of the, uh, this period of time and we have mars and saturn in the fourth house of land in the uh, that's also the house of uh, opposition political parties it's the house of um what you might describe as the people or the 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 things that the the um uh, what's the word uh the resources of a country the resources of a nation this is in a trine very strongly to the sun um and we do see that although the transiting pluto has moved into the third house i'm going to show you in a moment how the um how pluto is actually in a progressed chart in the progressed u.s chart it's actually at 29 and a half degrees of Capricorn. And that's significant because that's exactly where Pluto retrogrades back to and stations direct in October of this year. Um, we have the sun on the natal Chiron of the United States. So the US is having its, I think number fifth or sixth, uh, I think it's fifth uh, Chiron return since its um, birth. And uh, and it's also going to have its 
um, progressed Chiron, coming back to Chiron as well. So um, quite a lot of really interesting things that are being called up around healing, around um, the, remember that the fifth house represents the army. It represents military and police and people who can protect, um, who, who are lacking. The military seems to have something like 9% of the required number of um, soldiers uh, so personnel they're, they're really understaffed i think only the navy the u.s navy has anywhere near sufficient um military but they're not or bodies i guess and they're they're still not doing what they need to in terms of numbers and so they're even they've come to the point where they're actually accepting uh undocumented immigrants as uh soldiers uh, and they will then in, in exchange for a fast track of, of um, citizenship. So this is a mess um, in so, so many ways. Um, right. So the, uh, the other aspect here is that the Mars and uh, Saturn conjunction for the United States is in a square to the ascendant. And this is mighty uncomfortable. And it does again reflect, and both of them are Jupiter ruled, and both of these reflect that there is some um, real issue with the identity of the United States at this time. I think that's uh, indisputable. Uh, the United States has lost probably 70% of global support, if not more. Um, and uh, the world has kind of had enough uh, with uh, NATO countries and the US in particular and, and Israel as well. Uh, they've lost patience. And so we're going to see some reaction in the next two years based on this cycle. Uh, Jupiter is, is again, remember, in the sixth house of conflicts and difficulties and challenges to overcome um, ways of managing the conflicts, uh, debts and other uh, aspects as well come into the sixth house. Um, and so that's, that's a really big shift a really big priority for the United States in the next two years. Um, what was the other thing? I just want to check my notes because I did have so many things to say that I'm sure I'm forgetting something. Um, right, I'll leave it for now because I'd say that that's probably enough. Um, what I did forget to say it was that, um, but uh, I'll, maybe I'll do a whole different video on these things. I really love uh, to incorporate politics and history with astrology because it's so telling, but um, it's just uh, difficult to find the time. Um, yeah, in the, the Saturn, uh, Mars-Saturn conjunction of 1968, just to give you another example, I might pull that in. Um, yeah. I'm going to just end up confusing you, but I'll just tell you because otherwise I'm just going to confuse you. I just wanted to mention that that was a really important one because that is where then um, there was a My Life massacre that happened uh, two weeks after, like literally two weeks after that Mars-Saturn eclipse. The United States was um, found to be committing war crimes and atrocities against civilians in this village called Mai Lai in Vietnam, Vietnam. And when that was exposed by journalists at the time, um, which I think was uh, Daniel Ellsberg was one of them, I think. And um, uh, I've forgotten the other names, but anyway, uh, they exposed this to the media. And up until that time, as is the way things go, um, Americans did not know what was going on in Vietnam. They had only a very vague idea of what was going on. Most people were not informed, as is, again, even today, the case. And, uh, and they didn't realize what was actually going on in their name. And when they realized what, was, what had happened, uh, that how many villagers were massacred by the, this um, unit of American soldiers, that was the turning point, which then was the beginning of the end of the Vietnam War. And this process of protesting um, was really huge. Now, I'm saying that we're looking at something similar to this now, um, because we do have this pushback that is really strong um, for many reasons, both from the inside of the United States and from the outside of the United States. We have many reasons for this to be a very, very strong pushback. Um, 
and the yeah this this is going to be the beginning of the end of a number of ways that the us is engaging in the world um, around uh, i want to pull up the pro progress this is secondary progressions which is another way of working in terms of a predictive technique it's not my favorite i, I do prefer to work with um, uh, transits compared to the progressions I find them much more impactful, but nonetheless, this is informative, especially for a country where the progressions actually are really, um, they, they have such a long lifespan that things really jump out. So here we have the nodal axis and the nodal axis is squaring Jupiter, you know, progressed Jupiter in the 11th house. Um, this is by the way, uh, in the nation's chart, the 11th house is, particularly with reference to things like um, the Senate or Congress or uh, the, the political fora. It's basically what that represents. Um, and uh, the South Node is conjoining the US progressed Mars, which is in Libra. Um, remember that the Libra in Ukraine's chart, uh, sorry, Mars was in Libra in Ukraine's chart in the 12th house, so when, when Mars rules the next house, whenever it's in the previous house, whether it be, for example, ruling, um, uh, in this case, ruling Scorpio, but in Libra, it's very weak. It's That's one of the reasons it becomes so weak. It's losing dignity from being in the house before. Um, and Mars in Libra, of course, is, and the same thing with um, Aries, Mars rules Aries, but when it's in Pisces, it loses its drive, it loses its um, force. Um, so that's one way of explaining that, that uh, relationship. Uh, it's less undignified, let's say, in Pisces than it is in Libra because it's also here in its fall. So not only is it in the 12th house, but it's also in opposition to its sign of rulership. So it's in particularly bad dignity. And so this is also what we're seeing in the US is that their um, progressed Mars is weakening. And they, although they continue to project this, it's actually not as strong as it claims to be. And we're seeing that in a very accelerated way as the South Node is crossing that Mars, we're seeing that in real time. Um, we have, there we have the progressed um, Pluto, for example, at 2932 of Capricorn. So that already has been a point that has been crossed last um, uh, spring um, in um, 2023. We got it again in January and we get it again now in, um, what is it, in October, November, um, election time <laughs> uh, for the fun of it. And so we're looking at a real uh, erosion, a really rapid erosion of what the United States represents. Now we also have Pluto currently in a square to Saturn and Saturn is in the Mars ruled uh, Scorpio. Uh, Mars currently, Mars with Saturn is currently in the seventh uh, um, house uh, based on the progress chart, the seventh house of the progressed US chart, which again puts it in conflict with a lot of countries. Um, but there's a new moon um, configuration here as well. Just weeks ago, there was a new moon in the seventh house of the US uh, chart. And this is a, a new beginning in terms of relationships with people. Uh, but it's or not people, but uh, countries. Uh, so it's not uh, necessarily uh, going to be like it was before. Uh, so there's a whole new cycle of relationships with other countries going on here. Um, and and it will come from a place where where the U.S. is weaker. It's weakened and weaker than ever before. Mars is opposing Chiron. Uh, the, the progressed Chiron is at 17 degrees, and Mars is also being opposed by the transiting Chiron as well. Uh, so it's a, it's a really telling chart. It really does show quite a lot about how things are shifting, and, and we're seeing it on the news. If you're watching any decent news, if you're watching mainstream news, this is all Chinese to you. You wouldn't understand uh, because that's not what you're hearing. Um, so what I wanted to point out, a couple of things that I wanted to finish up with here is that during today, no, not today, this, well, yesterday, let's say it was the 9th of April. So the 8th and 9th of April, we had quite a lot of activity between China and Russia. 
And one of the things that happened was that China yesterday on the 9th agreed to support Russia. And that's significant because China and Russia were not really great allies for a very long time, but the United States and NATO, US ruled NATO, has um, basically pushed Russia into the arms of China, uh, which is not wise. And that was forecast, that was absolutely predicted in 2021 as this was all building and military maneuvers were being done by NATO in the Mediterranean, training Ukrainians and the Russians were saying, please stop doing that. And everybody else said, na 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 na. And here we are. So here we are. Now we've got Russia and China teaming up against the US and NATO and saying, uh, China has agreed to back Russia in uh, whatever comes. So there we are. At the same time that Putin was in China, so he was in Beijing on the 9th, he might still be there today. Um, Janet Yellen, the head of the United States Federal Reserve, um, was in Beijing. And she was not greeted by any high ranking Chinese official. Now, in diplomatic language, um, you have these really understated ways of um, disregarding people and or punishing countries. And one of them is to not send high ranking officials to greet. And China has been doing this very, um, very conspicuously for the last two years. Um, Ursula von der Leyen last year had to take a train back to the airport. <laughs> she wasn't escorted officially to the airport when she visited last year because China said, you know what? I don't even know who you are. Why are you here? You're the head of the European Commission and you don't have diplomatic status. You're, you're way above your pay grade. Please go home. Um, and so they're basically doing this as a way of putting these people who have, um, let's face it, the most incredible uh, hubris, putting them in their place. And uh, at the same time, as China agreed to support Russia, Janet Yellen, on behalf of the United States, was chastising China uh, for selling too many things to America. Can you believe it? You can't make this stuff up. Um, the other thing that happened yesterday was that uh, Iran threatened to avenge Israel's bombing of its embassy in Jordan. Now, em embassies are considered sovereign territory, so it's kind of like a little chunk of a country in another land. And this is significant because if a country bombs an embassy, this is, it's unheard of. Like it's, it's one of, it, it happened, it, the Americans did it, of course, why not? Uh, the Americans did it in 1998, they bombed the Chinese embassy accidentally on purpose during the um, wars in the former Yugoslavia. And so that was the Chinese embassy that was in Serbia that they bombed. Oops, sorry. And then they did apologize. And the Clinton administration actually did pay uh, uh, reparations to China. Uh, but to be honest, um, it was, again, kind of a so-so accident. And that was Again, another way of showing you that NATO is not a, de a defensive organization, but an offensive organization, because that was not even a country within its treaty. Um, so uh, it's a pretty long, uh, long story, and we're seeing it come to a head. So remember, again, these cycles start years and years before the Mars and Saturn cycle starts, and then we see the consequences of them years and years ahead. And especially when it comes into the sign, the theme of the sign repeats very strongly. Um, so yeah, so look for lots of trade wars coming up. We have, remember, Venus in Aries. Mars ruled Venus in Aries as Mars is uh, now conjoining Saturn will be what the point at which the Mars-Saturn conjunction comes in 2026, along with Mercury, another factor resembling or, or uh, symbolizing trade. Uh, so it's definitely a time to um, strap on and strap in and um, and try to keep your sense of humor about things. Um, we only live once. We really need to seize the day and do the right thing. Um, and I wanted to show you just one last thing that I meant to show you in the in the video for the um, eclipse, because that's something uh, that also represents this need for courage and a need for action. And it's called uh, the Ganesha Mudra or Ganapati Mudra. And uh, so Lord Ganesha is the Lord of uh, new beginnings and the remover of obstacles. And you're going to take your hands 
and cling together. Your fingers are wrapped together and you're pulling your arms apart as you do the mudra. And you simply breathe here. If you know the mantras, you can do them. And simply breathe while you're pulling the fingers apart. So there's quite a lot of strength in the arms. There's quite a lot of stability in the shoulders. Let your shoulders relax down. Don't pull them up around your ears. And then you can do the same in reverse. You just swap your hands and pull apart and take a couple of really deep breaths as you do that, maybe three breaths at a time. Now, this mudra is for bringing courage. It's for a sense of capacity to overcome. Uh, it brings you a physical, very, very palpable sense of uh, strength. And that's the purpose of the mudra. And that's what we need right now as we have this Mars and Saturn conjunction happening today and all this week, but starting a whole new cycle of two years to come. So um, that's it from me. Thank you if you've come this far with me. Thanks for watching. And I will um, show you the transits coming up for next week with uh, Jupiter and Uranus conjoining it to almost 22 degrees of Taurus. Uh, some definitely a breath of fresh air for many of us. And, um, and just uh, while, I'm, while I'm at it, I might as well point out that that will be squaring the, um, the mid heaven <laughs> of this particular chart. Why not? Um, just, just to keep the theme going. So um, I hope you found this interesting and I will speak to you in the next video. See you very soon. Bye bye.